Yeah. Oh. Let me see your necklace. Oh, this is my uh, my mala. Oh, I love it. That's so pretty. Yeah, it's uh, it's just a reminder. I love it. That uh, I'm not real. Nothing's real, and don't take things so seriously. You know? Exactly, because yeah. we are. I forgot. How does Aaron Dowdy say it? Do you know who I'm talking about? I do, but I don't know what you're t what he says. We are all just something uh, spiritual beings living a temporary human experience. That's it. Yeah. yeah. It's all just uh, we're just the loving awareness of the universe taking yeah. human form for this momentary yeah uh, exactly <laughs> experience in time you know and it's. Yeah. It's not to be taken seriously. It's it's just it's just for fun. Yeah. So yeah, I uh, I love it. I love it, and that's why I wear them all all the time. And uh, it helps keep me balanced. So it's beautiful. Yeah. So I guess we're already in it. Look at this. Go, hey everybody. I know. We're already Hi. talking. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. This is uh, my guest, Leona X. <laughs> Fantastic to have you here, Leona. And, uh, Thank you for having me. Yeah, I love amazing. doing stuff like this. It's it's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a blast for me. I I absolutely love catching up with my friends awesome. and having real conversations with people. And uh, yeah, because we never have been able to. Yeah, you know, in our industry, it just doesn't happen that way. Yeah. It's so fast, and we're just moving. And and yeah. then when we are in the same room, there's you know everything's so loud because we deal with music, and so you can't really have conversations. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you just scream at each other real quick. You're like, hey, it's good to see you. I guess we're still friends. Right. I'm going to go get a drink. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, this has been a real blessing for me to just be able to get to actually learn about people, get to know people, and uh, yeah. and have a real conversation with all these people in my life that I've known forever. I've probably known you for like a decade. I know. And, you know, it's like. I think it has been about that long. Yeah. Yeah. And we, you know, we just never get to do this. So it's, I really yeah. enjoy it. And I, I've been doing it for quite a while now. And I hope to continue to do it. Awesome. So, yeah. Uh, so ha anyways, how have you been? How, how has life been treating you? Uh, you know, honestly, I can't complain. Things are, uh, I'm really blessed. I have a really good life. Um, you know, the last year uh, through COVID, uh, just like everyone, I have my challenges. And... Uh, but I got over it, and um, and it was l like um, going back to something I heard you say earlier in another video was it, uh, it's crazy. It's like once I started realizing how thankful and grateful I am for everything, it, it's like my life was just so much better. Oh yeah, you know, uh, it's hard to explain. Uh, but it just kept getting better and better the more grateful I was for everything. Um, but I have to say that um, part of what helped me to get to that stage to where I felt grateful was that I had to go through a really dark time first. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, there is no light without the dark. Everything comes in pairs. It, it was a very dark time. Um, and... You know, coming out of it was going through that and coming out of it was the best thing that ever happened to me, besides the birth of my two daughters, <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, I think it's all about perspective in this life. And, uh, yeah. and you can really create your own heaven or your own hell to exist in. And it's all just the way you're looking at things. And it's like the, the world, like the tangible world around us isn't actually changing, but the way we perceive it is constantly this this yes. you know either it, it, it can get frustrating sometimes i know i yeah. created quite the hellscape for myself and I pessimistic did too. thought processes and it just leads to depression and anxiety and all these things yeah and yeah it's uh being thankful is such a beautiful thing you know you just wake up and you're just great grateful to be alive grateful that all your arms and legs work you know or yeah. whatever you know just simple things in life that we take for granted, you know, and, and yeah. when you start learning to be so, uh, like, yeah, thankful, grac gracious about those kinds of yeah. things, it, uh, it really opens it up and life becomes such a beautiful yeah. experience. 
Yeah, I did need a little uh, assistance, a little help getting out of it, uh, though, because um, come to find out, um, you know, I've never been a depressed person in my life. I've always been very happy-go-lucky, um, easygoing. And in fact, I remember my grandmother telling me that. She was like, God, you just always have such a good disposition. You're always smiling and happy and and everything. And um and so when I started going through, um, and I promise I won't talk about this for a long time because I don't want to talk about depressing stuff. No, we got all um, the time in the world. It's a podcast. There's no time limits. Yeah. But I did go through a dark time, like I said, and a time where I was depressed. And um, But I think one of the things that it made it hard for me to recognize is because I had always been told that. My grandmother had always told me that about how, you know, I had such a sweet disposition and, you know, so happy all the time. And I generally considered myself to be a happy person. And so when I started to get depressed, I think part of me was like, I just couldn't believe that because I always said, I don't understand, you know, uh, how... Uh, and this might be a little touchy too, but you know, people who commit suicide, how, how could you be that sad? How could you, um, sink into such a deep hole like that and, you know, want to do that? I just never could understand. And then when I went through my depression, I, I understood it. Um, but anyway, so I had to realize it first, but then I also was having a lot of um, physical symptoms, a lot of, and, and I'm talking about this because everybody knows because I made a video about it. Um, so I had been getting really sick too, uh, physically. Um, unexplainable things though that were more like autoimmune uh, um, issues. Um, so like food allergies, I couldn't eat anything, no matter what I ate, would I would get sick. Um, I was losing weight um, unintentionally, like with no explanation losing my hair and just like, you know, on and on and on. I was getting all these aches and pains. And anyway, um, so, and I had been going to all these doctors, uh, namely an immunologist and an allergist, and, um, and they couldn't figure it out. And then finally, uh, this will turn out to be an interesting story because it's, it's, uh, it's, it's something that I had never heard of before. So anyway, finally, my um, regular physician did an iron panel oh, yeah. on me. And so most people don't have enough iron. They have a deficiency. I had extreme overload. Oh, really? Like I had way too much. Like it was dangerously high levels. And uh, so um, I was having iron overload. And um, so we did some other testing um, and found out that I have a defected HFE gene uh, that I was born with. So I've always had it. And so what happens when you have this is that your body can't absorb iron. So what does it do? It stores it in all your organs, your liver, your heart, your pancreas. What? And guess what else? Your pituitary gland. So it causes severe depression. And so when I realized, um, so when we came up with that diagnosis, all I had to do was get phlebotomies every month. So that's where they, it's like donating blood every month. Yeah. So they take a pint of blood. They, you just Because that's the only way for the iron to leave your body is through the blood. So once I started doing that, I started getting better gradually and better and better. And now I'm to the point of uh, just a maintenance. So I only have to do it like every few months and I can't even explain what a difference in my life <laughs> it has made. So that's what I mean by having a little assistance getting out of the uh, depression that I was in. But at the same time, a lot of it was mental also, you know, because at the same time I was going through the spiritual awakening and, you know, realizing, listening to a lot of Aaron Dowdy <laughs> videos um, and um, just making me really reflect on everything I mean I, everything and um, so the better I got 
the more I started realizing how lucky I am, and I started thinking about, wow, I am so lucky. <laughs> and then from there, it just snowballed, you know. So anyway, that's the the condensed story of, <laughs> I don't know how condensed yeah. it was. Well, but <laughs> that's, that's beautiful. I'm glad you're feeling better. Yeah. and. Yeah. yeah, and it's it's a it's a gift to be able to go through that and come out of it and and have that place of yeah. a point of reference of of this low low in your life where you can recognize that I'm not there anymore and that this is a good day and yeah. you know we're moving forward in a positive direction and yeah and that really helps every every day it's uh, significantly better. It really is. And I do want to point out one thing, uh, one last thing in regards to that. Um, I actually made a video about it because I wanted to make awareness about it because um, it's such a, um, um, a simple cure to just give blood. But because it's so underdiagnosed, there are thousands of people that don't know they have it and it ends up killing them. You know, because it damages their organs yeah, and, the and, they, and they don't know about it, you know. So I did make a video about it. And um, but I do want to say that, you know, if uh, just have your doctor check your iron levels, people, especially if um, you are of northern European descent. <laughs> so because apparently it's uh, mostly affects people of northern European descent and which I am. Um, so, yeah. Just be aware. <laughs> yeah, that's scary stuff. I try to get um, my blood tested once a year and check for hormone levels and make sure all my uh, all my levels are properly like where they're at efficiently. Yeah. And are you Northern European? Uh, I guess so. I I'd have to say I'm uh, I have Scandinavian in my blood. I'm yeah, I'm I would British think so. and Irish and yeah. Scandinavian and all of it's just white, 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 yep. white. I did the 23 and me. I was hoping for something spicy in there, and it was yeah. just like, no, pas <laughs> pasty and white as you can get. <laughs> Same here. I did the Ancestry.com, and that's yeah. how I uh, found out my DNA. That's also how I found out who my biological father is. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Yeah. I have lots uh, of stories. Yeah? How did that work <laughs> out? I was, I was interested in doing the Ancestry uh, website, so I didn't get along, around to doing that one. Oh, my God. It's so fascinating. Yeah? It is it's so fascinating, especially if you're someone like me that I grew up never knowing and um, always questioning where I came from and what ethnicity am I? And a lot of people throughout my lifetime would always ask, are you European? Are you part Asian? Or um, what are you? Um, uh, and then my mother used to tell me that we were part Cherokee Indian. And then when I did my DNA, zero Cherokee Indian, <laughs> no Native American uh, ancestry whatsoever. It's just all Northern European, you know. Uh, so that's kind of funny. But um, the main question I had my whole life um, was who is my father? Um, so turns out... Um, and uh, my mother, bless her heart, she's she's no longer with us. Um, but she, and I say this with all love, but she wasn't exactly truthful with me. Yeah. And um, uh, so uh, it wasn't that she didn't tell me the truth, but it was just that she uh, wasn't telling me. It's it's what she wasn't telling me, and and so I always wondered who it was, and um, and then. Finally, in 2017, was it 17? Uh, my husband bought a DNA test for me through Ancestry. And uh, that's how I was able to find him. But I didn't find him until three years after he passed away. Mm. I was literally so heartbroken. I just couldn't believe it because I was like, just if I would have done this three years ago, like I just barely missed it. And then what I found out about him was absolutely insane in a good way. And uh, so it turns out that I'm literally a spitting image of him in every way. And he had no other children besides me. Um, so he had passed away, but I was able to um, get a hold of his brothers, which are my uncles. And I went over, and this is in Samson, Alabama, 
And I went over there to meet them and to talk to them and everything. And so they drove me around and showed me his house where he uh, hung out at. And I'll tell you about that stuff. Um, And they told me a lot about him. And uh, they were all very nice. So his name was Jerry Logan. And he played guitar in Gibson SG. I love the SG. (laughs) Yes. So, you know, I play Gibson SG. And um, he was an artist, architect. He painted wall murals on government buildings. He did his own uh, paintings, sketches of rock stars that he loved and adored, which are the same ones as me. Jimi Hendrix, John Lee Hooker, uh, and several other ones. Um, and that, um, he not only did that, but he built his own house, uh, and it was, uh, it's literally a tree house in the forest. That's Uh, pretty cool. I'm not even exaggerating. It's like up in the trees in the forest of Sampson, Alabama, and it's got this big, long walkway staircase that walks up to it. And um, and in he had all his art, all the art that he did. He played harmonica and sang, played guitar, uh, songwriting, I, it, and uh, it was like he was. With, from what they tell me, he was so extremely talented in everything that it actually was a setback for him because he couldn't focus on anything. Yeah, he couldn't just focus on one thing, and so the thing that I heard from all of them, it was the very common theme was that he could have been a millionaire if he could just focus on one thing, but he couldn't. (laughs) His just mind was just constantly going, you know, and creating things. He built an airplane, he built guitars, his house. And I mean, I could just go on and on. And when I found this out, that made it even more heartbreaking because I've always been that way too, my whole life. Like I just... I can never, uh, the only thing I've ever been able to focus on is anything artistic, music, art, um, you know, anything that has to do with that. And, you know, I guess you could call me obsessed, you know, and, um, but I never had a relationship with my uh, stepfather. So I was always craving that relationship. And so when I think back, you know, to when I found out about this, how heartbreaking it was because of that, too. The, the memories that never happened, the, um, the experiences that never happened, and he never knew about me. That's wild. Yeah. And, and I look just like him, too. And it's just crazy. Like, I feel like we would have just been so tight, yeah. you know? So um, anyway, uh, I didn't mean for that to be a depressing story, too. (laughs) No, it's not a really depressing story. You know, you Um, found your father and you got to learn who he was. And I mean, that's 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 beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, No, I'm I'm uh, that's what I came out of it with was thinking, well, at least now I know I know who he is. I know his family and I know where I came from. Uh, But that definitely was the start of things. So there was that. And then. Um, a bunch of other things. So, but uh, I thought that was an interesting story to tell because definitely of the uh, the amazing. I mean, it's like how can you be so much like someone you never met ever, right. you that you never even knew about, and it goes to show you how deep the DNA runs in your blood, literally. Oh yeah. You know. Well, you know, we're just these. Uh I, I like to refer to it as an autonomous meat, autonomous meat robot that just kind of functions on these uh, default settings that we are programmed with at birth. And, you know, the game is kind of to realize that and to start reprogramming the settings and rehypnotizing yourself in a specific way that you want to function on. But ultimately, yeah. you're still this set of this code, this, this set of programming that you were born into. And like me and my father, I'm the spitting image of my father, and we have damn near all the same tendencies. Really? I'm, just a, I'm just a clone <laughs> of the man. Yeah. Very handsome guy. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, yeah, it's, uh, it's a total trip to, uh, I, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to get to hang out with him a lot now that he's retired. And, uh, and yeah, we just, we're the same freaking dude. It's, it, it 
blows us both away and my mom is always oh, laughing yeah. at us for <laughs> all the neuroticisms and interesting tendencies that are inherent in our systems. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, genetics are so powerful. It really is. And so it's so fascinating to learn about it. I encourage anyone to, uh, do their DNA because there's not only, you know, the family history, but also just your heritage or culture, where you came from, you know, and, um, uh, and, and what I found out being a descendant from, uh, you know, Northern Europe is that, uh, before the Britons and the English were the Celts. And um, so I, I thought that was really interesting, too. And since then, I've been really, really into the Celtic um, culture uh, and the ancient Celts. And um, so that's made me really fascinated with things like swords and um, the, the torques. What I really love... Um, uh, f the the jewelry from that time it's called a torque I don't know if you know I, I didn't wear it today but I have it in my pictures how do you spell it I can look one up and put it's it on the screen T O R Q and um, for example the uh, Celtic queen Boudica wore one and uh, who I'm also really uh, fascinated with because she's like you know female warrior uh, and that's a whole nother story Boudica. If this you, looks like a cool Celtic version of one. Something yeah, like that yeah, goes yeah. Around the neck. Yeah, mine is like that, except for it has, of course, cats. Cats. <laughs> yeah, we were talking about the cats before we yeah. started. <laughs> yeah, those are beautiful. I love all yeah, that uh, aren't they? ancient uh, jewelry and different kinds of uh, ways that people uh, used fashion in the past. It's always a changing art, man. And, yeah. Oh wow, look at all these. These are pretty. I know, aren't they? I like this one. Viking torque bracelet. Oh, well, yeah. that's a really big picture. <laughs> Let me see if I can. Boom. That's oh, a cool one. Oh, yeah, that looks almost like mine, except yeah. mine are cats. Except but it has cats. that uh, intertwining um, that almost, design. Yeah, that braided look kind of thing. You can actually see mine in the picture on my website. On your website? Yeah. I got your website pulled up. Let's yeah. see. Here. I made yeah, sure I wore rocks. that in the photo shoot. <laughs> Let's see here. Is it on the, the home page? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, I see it right there. And ooh, you got this super cool graphic that pops up too, which I dig. And yeah, you probably right can't there. see it that yeah, good. Yeah, maybe we'll find another shot of it. Yeah. And you can find it on my Facebook page. <laughs> I'll look it up right now. On the Leona X page. <laughs> the, okay. <laughs> Yeah, um, I keep both accounts because, you know, uh, to be honest, most people interact with the personal account, okay. you know, um, even though I would rather them interact with me on the uh, Leona X page. So remember that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did find it. Yeah. Boom. Yep, there it is. That's a really good one of it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Awesome. And my sword. <laughs> I think I used to have a sword just like that. Yeah. I ended up getting rid of all my uh, all my weaponry. I had a bunch of swords and oh, you did different stuff. Yeah, when we moved, I got rid of. I was like saying earlier on, which is uh, I got into the Buddhism thing and the the oh, whole non attachment yeah. thing, and mm -hmm. so all the stuff that I've been collecting my whole life as a nerd. I was like, there's this collection where I'm just attached to all these just toys and yeah. old video games and swords and, you know, just, it was just junk. And when we were moving, I was like, I'm just going to get rid of everything. Oh my God. I just did that. It felt so good. Yes. I mean, it sucked. Letting go of it sucked. And then like five seconds later when it was gone and it wasn't my responsibility anymore, I was like relieved. I can relate to you. It's like such a feeling of freeing yourself. Like I just did that. Like, um, when was it a year ago? And I literally got rid of three quarters of my stuff that I had been hanging on to my yeah. whole life. And and I have really bizarre, crazy stuff, too. You know, stage clothing and, you know, because um, I'm just out there. <laughs> <laughs> it comes with being an artist. You know, that's part of the territory. Um, but... And it was crazy because, you know, like you, I had had so much attachment to these things. And I thought that, you know, like I had to have them in my life. And then I started going through that, you know, uh, spiritual awakening thing. And 
I don't know, something just went through me and I was like, I just don't need all of this stuff anymore. Yeah. And I just was on autopilot and I just started taking everything and filling up all these, you know, those big black garbage bags, you know, of everything. And it was like, it was so easy. And as I was doing it, I just felt like so much weight was coming off. It was crazy. Oh yeah, know? it's freeing. And then I got rid of it all and I didn't even think about it at yeah. all like I didn't feel sad except there was one time when I wished I would have saved this pair of shoes <laughs> <laughs> that I wanted to wear that went with this outfit uh, I wanted to put together but other than that I can relate yeah <laughs> yeah and now in my life I uh I don't grab at things anymore you know as well Same. Like getting rid of that big that big release of all that junk I was hanging on to and it's funny because a lot of it I thought like Star Wars collectibles old video games swords I was like oh this stuff is worth something and it was like ultimately in the end or it was one worth day nothing. it will be uh, yeah it was worth nothing and I was just collecting dust in my life and Same. taking up space and like, I had a whole room in my house that was just junk that I've been collecting since I was a kid, old video games and like you're saying, Star Wars toys, swords, just, just, just stuff and stuff and stuff. And I literally just scooped it into boxes and just took it to the Goodwill and was like, I don't need any of it. Didn't like, it just feel so good? It was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And now it's like, I, I I'll find myself, you know, being like, for a moment, go like, oh, that's a cool thing. I want that. And I go... It's perfectly fine right where it is. Yeah. I can appreciate it for this moment and I will move on with my life as opposed to like trying to fill my house full of things and fill my life full of things. Yeah. And it's just like I had to st- I, I stopped that that habit and like people were like what do you want for your birthday when it came around and I was like nothing. I don't want anything at all. Like I know exactly what you mean it. and it just makes you think about um like um I just really, I'm the same thing as you as when I see something. I'm just, I, at first, the the uh, the urge to, to get it, you yeah. know, to buy it or whatever is there. Um, uh, but I, I've gotten a lot more picky, a lot more choosy about what I actually uh, take into my house now. Yeah. Uh, so... It has to be, it has to serve a purpose. Yes. It has to serve a purpose for me. Yeah. It's got to be like one of these things, like these microphones and cameras and like stuff that I'm functioning on to create art and to create new things. Yes, exactly. That's so, that's like, okay, you know, or yeah. a book, you know, those are things that are or okay for me to purchase. Or if it's something that really means a lot yeah. to you, that really means something to you. And so I, I will say, um, in addition to, you know, when I got rid of all the stuff, was I, it was my mission to just only hold on to the things that were really special that yeah. meant a lot to me you know um like this ring like it's just a little kitty ring <laughs> 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 and it's not expensive at all but yeah. it's back from when i was in my 20s and um and i used to wear it all the time so it reminds me of my 20 year old self that's awesome you know so yeah, just things like that. And I also have um, this super cool belt. I don't have it on today, but it's a black leather belt and um, it's got studs on it, but they're not the kind of studs that stick out. They're just flat up against. Okay. And, and um, anyway, it has such a special meaning to me because it's um, same thing as the ring, you know, back from the day. And uh, so, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh I don't know. It's one of those things that really helped me a lot too, with like the just peace of mind though. And I, yeah. I encourage everybody go out and just get rid of all your junk. You don't need <laughs> it. You'll be thankful you did. But don't throw it away yeah. and don't put it in the in in the landfills. No, Donate it to, it to Goodwill, exactly, yeah. or it's to somebody or something. Yeah, I gave it yeah. to my friends. I told everybody, come take shit. I'm filling my garage up with stuff I don't need and yeah, all the fish tank stuff. I gave yeah. to my buddy Junior <laughs> who has a fish tank business, or mm-hmm. I gave to my dad who always wanted a fish tank we were talking about yeah. that out in the hallway there you know and like uh i made sure i went to good places where it would be you know where people can appreciate it because i wasn't appreciated anymore a lot of that stuff was just a burden to me yeah all that attachment in this world yeah. and it's uh it's part of the trap 
part of the trap. I think it's so fascinating and awesome to hear everybody's stories about um, the past couple years. Yeah. And and how this all affected them. And I would say that most people I know ha- talk about similar experiences of of, you know, really coming out of it a better, stronger person and just being more appreciative and um, and uh, just appreciating life more, you know? Absolutely. So I think it's um, an awesome cleansing of Mother Nature. <laughs> yeah. I don't think any of us had time to really be so self-reflective as we did or had the opportunity, even as kids. I mean, you only had maybe summer break, you know, a couple months off and it's like back to school. And so your whole life you've been on this grind of like, you're getting somewhere, you're trying to achieve something. And it's like, now you just have to sit still and reflect on on reality and, and, you know, recognize that, maybe there is nowhere to go. <laughs> like that's one of the big things for me yeah. is, is there, uh, there, there is nothing to actually achieve in this life. It's like, just be happy and enjoy the day. And you know, you're going to, you're going to die anyways. It's like L- live for the day all this and, shit and do what makes you happy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just like love everything around you. And you just yeah. try to develop that sense of love within yourself and then spread it to everything around you. It's and such an awesome thing. You. I just love it. Yeah. And I learned how to do a lot of new stuff too. Like I always complained that, um, uh, that I couldn't record, you know, I have, I'm a songwriter. So I constantly have songs constantly like it never stops it's just always going I mean you can write a song about everything literally yeah um and but the frustrating part is that when it's just stuck in your head and you can't do anything (laughs) with it and you can't record it you know and you and you can't get it out there and uh see and hear your vision come to life it's so frustrating so uh, one of the things that I said okay I'm gonna learn how to do these things for myself so that I don't have to be so frustrated all the time and rely on everybody else to do it for me so I'm I'm learning how to use Logic Pro great program (laughs) yeah I love it Um, now I'm still very beginner um but at least I'm able to get these ideas in my head out, you know. Yeah. Um, I learned how to use Illustrator, Photoshop, oh, nice. and After Effects. So that's how I've been able to come up with all these killer graphics that that's I've been fantastic. using. Yeah. So like the one on your homepage, did you make that or did you have someone design that for you? Um, I had someone was, design yeah. the Panther. Okay. But then I was able to put it together and... Um, Everything else that I did, I did yeah. myself, but that I couldn't do because that was like still very impressive, <laughs> very impressive. Uh, I'm really into the panthers and yeah, the cats. You know. Yeah, I know. I keep saying it right. <laughs> uh, yeah, we looked up a picture of your cats earlier, right? Where did it go? I have it up here somewhere. Oh they, yeah, here's the kitties. They, um, boop. Little, little kittens. So that was the, actually, that was the first one you showed was right even here. before I got to have them. That's when they were at their foster mom's, the oh, day really? the day that she rescued them from the, so their foster mom is, is Terry. She's on Facebook. She's the crazy oh, really? cat lady. Okay. <laughs> well, and I, it's okay for me to say that because that's yeah. what she calls herself and she prides herself on, you yeah. know, being the crazy cat lady and she rescues all these cats and she fosters them, gets them healthy, and then finds them home, which is a beautiful thing. Yeah. Um, and so that's where I got Luna and Gaia from. And that was that picture was from, that's actually at her house. So yeah. I got them when they were eight weeks old. Now they're a year and three months. And ah, there's Luna. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gaia. And that isn't that the best picture ever? That's a perfect picture. Of course, they're a lot bigger now, but um, I didn't keep up on the photos on social media. But so I named them Luna and Gaia for the moon and the earth. Great names. And they're sisters. Yeah. Uh, And honestly, they were a huge. 
Yeah, they were a huge part. Oh, and that necklace is the one that I have on now. She was playing, and this is the ashes of my, um, the cat that passed away before I got them. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I take her with me everywhere. And That's anyway, nice. I was wearing that in, in that video, and um, Luna was playing with it. <laughs> um, but Very they horrible. were a huge, I would say probably 90% of what helped me get through uh, that dark time. Yeah. Uh, uh, nothing like the companionship of a pet. Um, and it's been proven, too. Oh, yeah. You know, time and time again with elderly well, people, sick so people. just so much love that comes yeah. from your animals, you know? Mm -hmm. There's not... There's not the same, it's not the same relationship you have with other human beings. With human beings, there's a lot of give and take and expectations that come yeah. along with it. And I know there's this concept of unconditional love, but really there are definitely conditions to the love of a human being. But with Absolutely. an animal, it's like, I mean, Even when you think there are not. Yeah. There are. And that's one of the beautiful things about animals is that, you know, um, with us humans, we have so many things that occupy our minds and so many things that are up on top of the uh, pedestal of our needs and wants in life. You know, we have jobs. We have so many things that matter to us um, that are important to us that take our time. And, you know, for them, the only thing that matters to them is you. Yeah. That's it. Nothing else. I mean, besides eating and sleeping and, you know. Oh, definitely. But. They have no other desires or wants. They have no materialistic desires or wants. It's the purest form of existence yeah. that I can think of. And um, sometimes I just feel like we just don't deserve the love that they give to us. And we definitely don't appreciate that. Not everybody, but yeah. um, I think it's, yeah, it's the purest love ever yeah they have absolutely the, no agenda except just to be with you that's it nothing yeah. else they just want your attention and your yeah. love and they'll give you as much as they can back and yeah. it's a beautiful thing man i yeah, i dig it yeah i think it's that's one of those uh crazy parts of the human condition is that we aren't satisfied with just meeting our survival requirements you know it's like once we've eaten and you know you could eat poop pee eat mm -hmm. and sleep and you should be content with that. You know, you have a little shelter and you should be good to go. But uh, humans are the only things out there that really have to learn how to be, how to be, right? The, the whole being yeah. thing. It's, it's, and it's not taught to us properly and it's not inherent uh, in our existence on how to actually accomplish that, that act of just being. And exactly. I don't think a lot of people ever figure that out either in their lives. I mean, there's just so much suffering that comes along with... Uh, with not realizing how to function and how to just exist without requiring anything in this life. It's always just grabbing and attaching and finding things and desire and aversion. And yeah. it's such a frustrating existence. And even for people like us, I mean, here we sit here talking about it, but it's, it's a struggle for us too, oh, you yeah. know, admittedly. Um, but uh, there are so many people that aren't, don't even have that much awareness about it, you know? And, um, yeah, I, um, when my mind thinks about that, it's just like, Pff. yeah, you know, well, that's why I try to talk about it a lot. You know, I know, um, I, I, I was super ignorant of the fact, you know, that there, these are all things that you're supposed to be practicing throughout your existence. And I, uh, like you were talking about depression earlier and, and I don't, uh, don't hide the fact that I went through a pretty deep suicidal depression in my existence and mm -hmm. trying to attach myself to the world and trying to, f trying to find happiness outside of myself, thinking that these things will make me happy as mm -hmm. opposed to happiness comes from within me and I have to exude happiness. And you have the potential for that. I mean, we're all born with that potential of overwhelming love and happiness within us and at some point along the way you think it's out there instead of in here yeah, and it's a very good lost. way to put it yeah yeah and uh and it's uh it drove me totally crazy trying to find it elsewhere in in drugs and in, in, same in, in in you know pleasure and and just like all these external things that i thought were going to make me happy and i always try to reiterate that to people all the time man like it's just 
you, you were born perfect and you don't need any of this shit around you. Yeah. Everything yeah. is already, everything's already exactly the way it's supposed to be. It's just learning to remove this filter of whatever you think reality is in front of you and, and, yeah. and actually see it for how beautiful it truly is all the time. For real. Yeah. And I think one of the awesome things about, you know, our day and age um, with technology and the way that it is now, we have, I think that more and more people are becoming uh, so much more aware of everything we're talking about and beyond so many other subjects and, you know, genres, fields, et cetera, because of, you know, of technology and uh, having uh information at our fingertips you know i mean we can look up literally anything on the youtube uh, on the web and particularly youtube you can watch videos about anything seriously um you learn how to do stuff um all kinds of different things and um just listen to uh, inspirational stuff whatever medical stuff anything you know and that's awesome um i think i have to say that it was it's a huge part of why i was able to discover all of these things you know because of the um age of technology today yeah you know i uh i'm 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 right there with you i uh i love listening to like alan watts and ram das and sad guru and jordan peterson and all yeah. these inspirational people on uh on youtube it's just beautiful that it's just free to listen to all the time and yeah it recommends new ones to you as you go you know yeah like, like um it's like a rabbit hole you watch one yeah. and then you get uh pointed to another one and then so on and so on <laughs> yeah i would have never known about Sadhguru specifically and if it wasn't for youtube like alan watts i kind of found and then um, you know, Alan Watts led to Aldous Huxley and then Aldous Huxley, Timothy Leary to Ram Dass, you know, these kind of things through reading and through listening to other people talk. But like Saad Guru in specific, uh, specifically, I never would have found him without the YouTube algorithm. And he, yeah. his words helped me immensely and the way he talks and he's just so, so nonchalant about everything. He really helped me come out of um, you know, a, a hole that I got in at the beginning of the, uh, the pandemic, mm -hmm. I got really depressed and, and lost in the whole, I, like losing everything that I lost and everything, all that. But, uh, it, it really helped me uh, reorganize my mind. Sad guru. It, it's, okay. he's a, uh, I'll have to look he's that a up. Hindu mystic kind of cat, okay. but, uh, yeah, he's, He's great. He's, not, he's he's just another guy. And and you know a lot of these things they all they all come from the same place of like love, but personal responsibility. Exactly. And That's a really good way to put it. Yeah. Yes. You know you can't. You, there's no one's gonna solve these problems for you. And yes, the world isn't perfect. And yes, things hurt. And life is suffering. And you're always going to suffer. But you got to accept that and, yeah. and 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 learn that this all comes from you trying to attach and cling to this world that isn't real like it's it's this 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 physical world isn't going to bring or add anything to you it, and the more you try to do that and the more you try to find your happiness and your peace externally yeah. the, the more you're going to suffer all the time i'm so glad that um you discovered that you discovered that youtuber and um were able to through that um, learn and discover things th uh, to bring happiness to your life, you know, and it sounds like that we've both um, kind of have a similar experience. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And it's a beautiful age we live in that that information is just so readily available yeah, to us. Seriously. Yeah, it's a gift. I hear so many of my, uh, or uh, just musicians and just public in general, um, talk about how um, because of technology and the internet, you know, it killed music and music is dead and rock is dead and, you know, and uh, all of these negative um, um, quotes about it. And um, so, so, yeah, there were a lot of things, you know, that it, it ultimately changed in, in the uh, music business. Um, but it also empowered us. 
too. It empower it put us in control of our own absolutely uh, musical careers. I know I just totally switched gears. No, it's, that's how we do <laughs> um, things. <laughs> but it's it's kind of, but not really, because you know we're kind of talking about the inter- how the internet yeah. changed and made things better. But uh, you know, it used to be um, where if you didn't have a record label and you weren't signed th- there was nothing you could do with your music there was you know you were they were the gatekeepers yeah. you, and and um you had to follow by the rules and you had to there was nothing you could do except hope and pray you know that you would get a deal and be able to make an album you know <laughs> Yeah, um, like you're just hoping for somebody to discover you and and give right. you a shot and it's just like it's such a such a rare opportunity for that to actually occur and it's like most of the time they were uh they were funneling all their efforts into specific locations that they would consider hot zones you know it's like when uh the 80s rock thing hit you know everyone was in LA trying to find another Guns N' Roses and it's like whenever the Nirvana thing hit everyone's in Seattle trying to yeah. find another Nirvana yeah. and it's like so everybody else around the country is just like well nobody's interested in what you're doing right now we're trying to copy this success pattern that, that we just noticed yes, is happening yes yes and so there is just really limited um, a lot of what music was you know yeah. like there's like like what's the sound of the the mid 2000s right like the 2010 to 2020 era what was that sound was there one i don't think there was one it's making me have to think yeah you know because it's just at that point i mean pandora pandora spotify you know just youtube in general all the social media outlets it's like there wasn't really i mean like you could say maybe like the indie rock kind of tone was was the deal and it might have been more the first decade of the 2000s but there's just not really this definitive genre, you know? I'd say, like, the 80s, it was the 80s rock, right? It was, yeah, the, you know, in the 90s, right. it was that kind of grungy thing. You know, 70s had, like, the disco and the Zeppelin-y kind of feel. Mm-hmm. But it's like, now it's just music. It's everything. I, it, there's just, there's, there's, every genre has its own platform. Then if you're into a specific genre, yeah. you just go to it. Yeah. I don't know what the exact um, statistics are, or not statistics, but the stats, whatever. Um, But apparently um, how many songs are getting uploaded to Spotify every day. It's like literally (laughs) millions. I'm going to look it up. Yeah, you should. But anyway, so what I wanted to say was that, I mean, literally the power is our, in our own hands now. We can do everything ourselves. We don't need a record label. You can make your own videos. You can make your own albums, do your own everything, you know? And, um, yeah, it's a lot harder. 60,000, this first one says. <laughs> oh, this really? This one says around 40. This one says around 60. We'll call it 50. We'll call it 50,000 wow. a day. Wow. Every day. Yeah. <laughs> every day, 50,000 more songs. That's wild. That's so Isn't many it? songs. Yeah. And, I mean, it's beautiful, though. You know, and everybody has the opportunity to get out there and promote their music. And, yeah. And it's like now... And anybody can get their music on Spotify, yeah. I, I mean, or, or anywhere, really, for that matter. I mean, I do, you know. I don't have a label or anything, but, uh, you know, you everything really has its one. pros and cons, though. I mean, it does make it more competitive because, you know, if everybody can do it, then, you know, then there's more competition and it just makes it harder to get heard because, like you said, there's 50,000 yeah. new songs getting uploaded on Spotify every and, day. Yeah, and without the pandemic f- screwing everything up, it's normally you have to go out there and do the, it's like reverted back to you got to go grind. You got to go out yeah. there and play shows and tour yeah. and uh, and just get exposure and like over five to ten years build a small following. Which means you got to really love it. Yeah, it's got to be your whole life. Yeah. Your you, whole uh, life. you got to really have a passion for it because yeah. it's a lot of punishment. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was just talking to a band the other day who had to play a show in front of six people. And then it's just like, you know, the, the show that I was mixing for him was full of people. But, you know, they just come back from another gig that was promoted properly or whatever was going yeah. on. And they said literally six people were in the crowd and they had to play that show. Wow. But it's like when you're on the road, that's that's how it goes sometimes. You know, sometimes there's there's hits and there's sometimes there's misses. And yeah. uh, it's just paying those dues to get to that point you want to be at. But yeah. uh, I, I remember when I was doing the, the Cracker Man thing, they, the, several labels approached us 
because we had the you know five six million views on that video online and we were starting to open for bigger national acts and ultimately it came down to well you don't have like 15,000 followers on your Instagram yeah, account exactly and they're like yeah. what difference does that make man you know and it's like and not only that like if I have gotten to the point where I have 15,000 people following my Instagram, what the fuck do I need you for? Right, exactly. You know, that's when that's when you're going to start working with me, you know, after I've done like serious groundwork and I'm already like national and doing it, then you're well, going to come take a cut. Word has it and what I've heard in so many uh, discussions about this is that that is what they're looking for yeah. because they they want directly um, to they only will take on artists that have already established themselves and are already making a big impact. Yeah. Um, so you may as well just do it yourself then. Yeah, keep all the money. <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. And that was the thing for me. I was like, what do you bring into the table? You know, yeah. like I just put up five grand to do this album. Uh, you gonna, you gonna compensate us for that? Are we getting yeah. any kind of money up front? Or yeah. will you have connections to tours that I don't have or like what can you what are you what are you doing and they're yeah. like well you know we're just going to take our 10 15 percent off the top and you guys are going to keep doing what you're doing we're just going to take our cut yeah. and you're going to be associated with the label and you know we'll you know, we'll do what we can here and there and there's just like no guarantees of of anything that's going to happen besides them taking our money the exactly. little money that we were making yeah it was wild it was wild these discussions I'd have with labels and uh, it's yeah. just like I we we unanimously were just like get the fuck out of here what do you think you literally can do everything yourself yeah. now I, it is a lot of work though I mean you can't go in into ass. it thinking that it's just gonna happen people are gonna follow you they're gonna go to your shows and you know no. you gotta work your ass off you gotta yeah. hustle and I mean hustle 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 um, you gotta pay to be on tour you know, now you gotta yeah. like pay a already successful band money to open for them now like they don't go oh you're a good band hop on open for us we have faith in you it's like no that's a whole business in and of itself there you got to pay to have that spot and you got to put your band I on know. the road it's not like you're going to pay to have that spot and they're like cool you could sleep on the tour bus with us it's like no rent a van you still got to pay for hotels it's still going to cost you a fortune yeah. for the door and we want you know ten twenty thousand dollars whatever it is for you to just even be associated it's with It's crazy, us. I know. And it's like, but that's really, the, that's where the gate keys are. Makes you ask yourself, why do you keep punishing yourself to yeah. be in this business? And again, I have to say, it's because it's a passion. It's, yeah. a, it's, it's a love for you it. You gotta love it. Which is another thing that, you know, that I really came to grips with over, the, you know, the whole pandemic thing. And musically, I decided I was only going to do what I wanted to do. That's all you from, should from, be doing. From now on. Life, you know, life's too short. Um, you know, my original music was always my number one passion and my number one thing. It was always the only thing that I wanted to do. But I also was dabbling in so many other things. You know, I have my other two tribute bands, Bad Reputation, which is the Joan Jett tribute, and uh, Thigh Voltage, which is the ACDC tribute. We were just talking um, to uh, Sean about that. I know. I know. I watched that episode. Um, and they're a lot of fun. I, I really love um, doing them. Um, but it wasn't really something that I did for, it wasn't a passion thing at all. It was a, something that I did so that I could make money yeah. to put into what I really wanted to do. But then it ends up back uh, firing on you because then you're so wrapped up and so busy in that that you forget what your passion is. And then you don't have time to do that. Yeah. And so over the last year, I've, I'm really trying to stick to it. It's kind of hard because I do kind of relapse a little, you know. Um, uh, but, you know, I said I was not going to do, I was only going to do my original music from here on out. I'm not going to do any cover bands. I'm not going to do any tribute bands or anything because I just want to focus on my own thing, uh, which is awesome. And I don't have a problem with focusing on that at all. It's really, really easy because it's my life. It's, it's I'm obsessed and that's all I think about. Um but what's hard is, um, you know, sticking to what I said that I'm not going to do any <laughs> because, you know, you also have an attachment to the people that you play with because yeah. they're your friends and you love them and you have fun with them, you know. And so 
so we'll get talking and then we'll be like, okay, yeah, let's do a show because it's fun, you know. <laughs> so, Ultimately, that's what uh, we're in it for. Yeah. It's fun to play. <laughs> and it's called playing for a reason, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, it is, a, it is a blast to get on stage and play songs that you love and yeah. jam with your friends. So it is, it's a pain in the butt. To, yeah. But know, it's so much stick fun. To your guns. Too. Yeah. <laughs> I always loved the formula that the Imagine Dragons did whenever and they were here was in that? Vegas. They uh they went all in together as a band and they rented two houses next to each other and they would rehearse there. And so the whole oh. all all five members of the band was back when it was five of them instead of four now, and then uh, they would all live together basically jam every day and then they would play cover songs of the casino so they had a cover band but it was still called imagine dragons so they were still getting the name out every night mm-hmm. and then it was like they play three cover songs and then go here's an original and they'd smack their original in and so every set would have like four of their originals but they're still getting paid the cover band rate to go right, out and play yeah, yeah. and then they would work their way into opening for yeah. big, big bands and so they were literally playing every single night in front of people as Imagine Dragons playing their original songs but getting paid for it because they like, were doing covers because they were doing covers yeah. mostly and I was like that's a fantastic formula yeah. and it worked it worked for them I mean it took them several years people think they just exploded out of nowhere but they put in a lot of hard work oh yeah but yeah. Uh, th- that was that was their game and they literally all the money that they made doing the cover band stuff went to pay for those two places where they rehearsed and lived and wow. so it was just like that was their yeah, whole that's... existence was to do that and they made it work that's really smart <laughs> yeah I, was, I thought that was the best that was the best way to make it I've ever seen happen it was and really that's genius. kind of a hard combination to do as a musician as a creative is try to um, stick to what it is that you want to do but be smart too <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know be creative and be smart too it's it's really hard yeah. It really is. <laughs> and I definitely want to start doing another original band as well. I have a lot of songs that are in the bank, and uh, I got to get them recorded and, like, really work on them and, and put a friggin' album together and start playing again. Well, I, you have the ability to yeah, do that. Uh, so I... Uh, yeah, I know, with all this gear sitting around here, you know. I find myself dealing with the YouTube channel more than anything these days. Oh, it's yeah. such a, to produce this and then all the additional content we're working on. and It's still, yeah. it's a lot of work, yeah. Yeah. All the editing and everything. Dude, and promoting on social media, yeah. even the little amount that I do as it is, like, it's still it a so lot It is so time consuming. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's like you got to be constantly on there um, posting to... Um, bring your likes up and, you know, uh, raise uh, awareness. You just got to be constantly putting content yeah. out there. And it's it's more work than, if you don't do it, you don't know how much work it is. Yeah, it's hard when you don't care. Yeah. And like I, I used to like the social media game and I would I was a swiper. You uh-huh. know, and I'd like, you know, now I'm so over it. And like I got rid of all these compulsive addictions and habits that yeah. I had in my life, which included that social right, media Right, that was one of them. But now it's like the cocaine addict going, well, I'm just going to weigh the cocaine out, but I'm not going to snort it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm just so going to be funny. around it all the time, but I won't do any of it. That's uh, so funny. Yeah, and it's like it's rough to like deal with it because I like have associated that with like I don't want a, anything to do with it. But yeah. then it's like you, that's part of the game I'm playing. Yeah, trust me, I struggle with it because I know that I need to do it. Um, but you know, I have to admit, I kind of hate to admit this, but for me, it's 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 mostly about that. It's mostly about getting my content out there. Yeah, you know, and it's. Um, uh, it's really the main reason I do the social media is to get my stuff out there. That's what it should be for. Um, well, I mean, I, a lot. some people would argue with that because it was actually invented for social purposes, for people to yeah. socialize. But then people like us who have something they want to promote. <laughs> well, yeah, you want to tell <laughs> we're, all your we're friends on about there. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so I have to admit that's, like, if I don't have something going on that I want to promote, like an album or show, or it's really hard for me to uh, to want to go on, you know, yeah. it, I want to go on there because it's, I don't know. It's gotten better. I, yeah. I know, like, uh, 
like I, anytime I do see any of it, at least the environment isn't quite so toxic anymore. Like for a while there, it was yeah. really toxic and full of everyone's bullshit opinions and like yeah. trying to shove everything down everyone's throats. And I've seen a lot less of that lately, but, uh, which is nice because nobody gives a shit about your opinion. Everybody has, <laughs> everybody has their opinion already. You're not, yeah. you're not converting anybody, especially with negativity like that. Yeah. You know, you're just like reaffirming that they hate yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So it's like that, that's good to see. At least it's chilled out a little bit. I don't know. I'm not on it very much to really recognize how much it's chilled out. But I remember before I was, I mean, obviously I was on it yeah. during the last administration and it was just chaos incarnate and everyone hating yeah. on each other so bad. And so hopefully there's a lot less of that than there well, is now. I hate to say it, but yeah. it's, yeah, <laughs> it's still not that great. Yeah. Yeah. See, I don't see it. I don't see much of it. I go in and I just fucking drop a post and like run for the hill. <laughs> That's what I do. Yeah. I just go on there. I make my posts. I blast all my shit. And yeah. then I'm like, and then I don't go on, you know, except, well, I can't say I don't go on at all because I know that I need to interact, you know, yeah. so I go on there and interact. That's the hard part. Um, I but try the to hardest part, a couple things. Yeah. Uh, but the hardest part for me with social media is that it's like I almost dread going on there for fear what I'm going to see, you know. Oh, yeah. Um, it, it, for me, it's animals. You know, oh, yeah. so like uh, for the longest time, it seemed like every time I go on there instantly, all this horrible stuff would be going through my feed. And it's like once I see it, I can't unsee it. Yeah. I can't forget about it. And then I'm focused on that for days, you know, and have nightmares. And I'm just it just would make me so sad. Um but it's it's been better lately. It hasn't been that bad. But for me, that's my number one fear of going on to social media. Is I, 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 I almost like I'm like scrolling like, uh, oh, what am I going to see? You, know? you got to not interact with it when you see it so yeah, it doesn't get in, right. linked up with your I, algorithm. I learned right? that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they get you that way. Everyone's like, why is everything so negative? And it's like, because you interact with negativity it's all the time. It's true, yeah. That's why everything's so negative. Yeah. And thing. Maybe that's why the my feed is so much yeah. better now because I stopped yeah. doing that. Yeah, <laughs> when you only like when you only like happy pictures, you yeah. know, it's like oh puppy dogs and lakes with boats on them, and it's just <laughs> like well here's a bunch of that shit if that's what you're gonna click on. Yeah, that's the game that they play. You know, they just yeah. try to feed, keep you on there as long as possible so they can True. advertise. True. Yeah. It's like it's like uh you know post 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 ad post post ad 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 post post ad 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 post post post. It's oh, like yeah, you're just right. they just want that they just want you to keep hitting the button up and trying to find one more thing to click yep. on. So, yeah. Dang! <laughs> it's, uh, I don't know. Did you ever see that thing on Netflix? What was it? There's a whole documentary that came out on Netflix about the people that created Facebook and Instagram and I don't the algorithms think I did. that they use and, and their end game and the goals that they were after and everything as a, as, a, as a corporate entity and what they were really up to. I didn't see that. You should check that out. It it's, sounds interesting. It's really diabolical and, uh, it, uh, yeah, I bet I can find it real quick and tell you the name of it, man. Uh, it was, uh, it was an eye opener for me. After I watched it, I couldn't go back. Like it was, uh, it's just gross what they're doing to people. And then everybody that was building it, like they all left. They were just like, I don't really want anything to do with this anymore because or this isn't what it's the social dilemma. That's what it was called. The social dilemma. That's what the documentary is called. Yeah, yeah, okay. it was brutal to watch exactly wow. what they were up to, and then they were like bringing to bringing to people's attention like the negative repercussions that all this was going to start having, and they were just like, so, <laughs> like look at the the revenue that we're getting, you know, like look at the wow. look at how much money we're making. It's insane, and it's like the number one source of advertisement for people. And then the other thing yeah. to talk about on there is the way that they're able to, uh, like, overthrow foreign governments. And we even saw it happen with our own uh, in the last, I don't want to get too political on you, but on the last election, everyone, like, it was, it was so obvious that anybody who had any kind of conservative thing or anything 
positive say about the the right side of the party was just like mm -hmm. fact check not allowed ban 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 yes. and it was just like oh my god and you're only allowed to say good things about the democrats and you're only allowed to say right. bad things about it. and so they controlled this whole narrative on there yeah. and so they do that in foreign governments as well and it goes into the whole stratagem that of sounds that. interesting like, i want to watch it yeah it's crazy it's crazy they were talking about how they overthrew a couple of different governments through creating anarchy in the streets and like and interfering with their election processes with that manipulation of their information not surprising at all yeah and then they did it to us too <laughs> yeah pretty much so, yeah it was, it's a wild documentary i definitely recommend checking all it right. out it's fucking crazy but yeah social media oh god damn i ain't talking about that shit forever let's <laughs> talk about something cooler you know uh, okay <laughs> You have a music video that you were promoting, right? Let's talk about your let's talk about I your do. music. You have uh it's which one is it that just came out? Leona X. It's called I'm um, Alive. I'm Alive. That's the one. Yeah. And do I have your permission to play I'm Alive? Absolutely. Awesome. Heck See yeah. Netflix? She gave me permission. <laughs> Um, I call this song my, my masterpiece. I don't know if anyone else thinks it's a masterpiece, but for me it is because it was everything that I was going through put into the song. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So this intro is called Till We Meet Again, and it's dedicated to my cat, Abby. Oh. So those are her ashes. Oh, is that what you're doing with that? We were yeah. wondering. Angela and I were watching it before you came over. Yeah, I went up to Mount Charleston to film that, and I took her ashes with me. I love Mount Charleston. And I released her into the universe. Till we meet again. Till we meet again. That's awesome. And then uh, at the time that I wrote the song is when I was going through all of that stuff that I told you about. And okay. my cat died, my mom died, I found out my biological father was dead. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, just in the whole, all the health issues and my pituitary gland and everything. That was all it was? Uh, yes! Oh my god! Yeah, so this song is a product of that. But they say that great songs come from um, emotional turmoil. Absolutely. And I feel like it's the best song I ever wrote. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah, it's a beautiful video. I was telling you uh, when you sent it Thank to me, you. I was like, man, whoever shot this is amazing. They did a great job. Yeah, so I want to give a shout out to Mason Wright. Mason and, Wright. Um, gosh, I wish I could remember the, the other guy that was with Nick. Oh, man, I can't believe I can't remember. Uh, but basically, Mason Wright and his crew, uh, he's an amazing talent uh, for videos. So, uh, yeah, it's not easy shooting uh, music videos. No. There's so much art involved in Oh, I put process. so much. Like, I planned everything, the costumes, everything. Okay. You know, like, I put all those costumes together, uh, the whole concept, everything, two locations, Mount Charleston. And do you recognize the indoor location? That counts, right? Yeah. <laughs> I recognize the chair you were sitting in. Everybody films there. <laughs> yeah, of course, man. That's a great spot. But I made it look like my own, you know, with oh, the yeah. darkness and... Well, yeah, they have all that black drape uh, that you put in front of the green screen, and then there's a lot of killer spots inside the studio to film in. It's a great, great live room. I mean, huge tall ceilings and big bay doors. You can drive a car. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Constantine and I actually helped get that place running again. Oh, did you? Yeah, the guitar player in oh, the video. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I poured my heart into this, and I, recording the song, I, I actually cried um, Not really. a few times uh, recording it. And then when it was done being mixed and I heard it for the first time, I literally, like, I was just shaking and just, I, just tears came to my eyes. Um, it was so emotional for me. And um, I wrote it three days after Ebby died under a full moon. Oh, nice. And then I recorded it under a full moon, released it under a full moon, and did the video under a full moon. That's fantastic. Yeah. I, I have a big, uh, big connection with the full moon now after the pandemic. Yeah. yeah. I had a whole ritual that was going on during the pandemic with like a psychedelic ritual that I would do every full moon. And then I'd cleanse all month. 
It's and amazing. During the full moon, like I'd be paying attention to the cycles of the moon and like trying to get on like rising with the sun and and like just becoming part of the world instead of living well in the world being of you the happen world. to be speaking with someone who completely gets that and yeah. understand i'm i'm kind of obsessed with the moon so yeah um i i plan around the phases of the moon i plan everything all my recordings and um everything i do uh, and it has such a big influence and we don't realize how much it does the uh, energy but, of a full moon is intense oh i go it crazy really like i literally am kind of psycho during a full moon oh, i mean yeah. it in a good way because <laughs> the creativity is just um overflowing in ways i can't even control yeah um and if you think about it it really makes sense if you think about how uh, the moon affects the oceans on the earth and how it causes the tides and everything i mean if if it can move water Imagine, because, you know, we're, what, 75% water? Yeah. Or how I... Yeah. No, it's like 75 I hope I don't sound dumb not no, you're, knowing you're right, you're right on the how much there. the percentage is. But so it, if the moon can move the ocean like that, imagine what it does to our bodies. Absolutely. Being that much percentage of water. I mean, it's almost scientific, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's... I'm I'm very into uh, aligning with the phases of the moon. It changed my world when I started doing it. Like I just did it as an experiment. Like what the hell? I got another, you know, it's the pandemic. Everything shut down, and so mm -hmm. I just started experimenting with my my reality then that in that fashion, and it made a huge difference. And now that I've gone yeah. back to like working again, where it's just like they just grind me into a paste, right? Like it's it's just brutal doing these corporate events, mainly oh, I bet. on yeah your sleep schedule because you're doing night shifts and you're doing morning shifts and you're doing day shifts yeah. and graveyards and it doesn't matter and you'll go from a graveyard shift into gig right into a morning shift not sleep and then like so and then like you get a little bit of time off and you're just trying to recalibrate your system all of a sudden and there's no oh, regularity yeah, and it's just it's so disrupting yeah because if you're doing corporate uh gigs then there's probably a lot of early morning oh yeah uh, uh, ones yeah you got to be there super early but then they want to throw late night parties too. And then they're like, uh, oh, well, you know, uh, it's just all over the place. And then I also still do concerts and the concerts happen at night. And I do, I was doing raves for a little while and raves happened really oh, late. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then you're Practically doing corporates. in the morning. Yeah. So it's been, for me, like when I was doing this whole cycle, cycling with the moon and like really getting in tune with it, um, I just, I felt a, a big change in, in my reality and like, and just my existence Same. in general. It's, it's really, it's, it's a beautiful thing when you start really getting in tune with the planet and the moon and all the phases of it exactly. all. Exactly. And then you disrupt it like I did with all this work that came my way, which is great. I love money. It's fantastic. But like emotionally and spiritually, it was really disruptive. And like, I felt so much pressure and anxiety and like, just, just all these different negative emotions building up inside of me and like the sleeplessness and the just trying to find some kind of balance it just throws everything like you get yourself in this beautiful balance and it just, just demolishes yeah. it and it affects you so it much it really does and it i didn't realize so that much. was happening yeah, yeah until i got to experiment with it i highly recommend to everybody to it's really absolutely find incredible yourself in that way. how everything works together yeah. and i mean that's a huge rabbit hole to go into um, I wouldn't even know where to begin. And we've already been talking for how long? Like, I seriously... An could, hour and 12 minutes. Oh, wow. I could talk <laughs> another two yeah. hours about this kind of stuff. Um, but, yeah, it's a it's a rabbit hole. But basically, everything works together. And, and when you can get in tune with your surroundings and um, the way the universe is pulling you and the phases of the moon and everything. I know I sound crazy, but I don't care. <laughs> I used to think it I'm was happy. crazy. I used to be <laughs> one of those people that was like, that's fucking bonkers. And you know, whatever, you know, you just, you sleep and you wake up and none of that matters. As long as you get six to eight hours of sleep or whatever, you know, then who cares if it's night sleep, day sleep or any of that. And that's just absolutely not true. I mean, I've lived every version of like whatever cycle you can put yourself on. You know, I did night shifts in graveyards <laughs> constantly forever. I've done morning shifts regularly forever and like everything in between. And it's like when you really get regulated with that kind of thing where you're, you're 
waking up with the sun and you're following the cycles of the moon and you're like really getting involved in harmony with, with, in harmony with nature, right? Yes. Yeah. And it's hard when you live in a city like it Las is. Vegas. Um, it, you know, really anywhere, but especially in large cities where it's like 24 seven on the go all the time. Oh. And, you know, so, but, um, and, and, it's and it's not easy for me. I, I really have to try hard to center myself sometimes and remind myself of these things. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's changed my opinion on about how I want to spend the rest of my life. That's for sure. Like I moved to Vegas yeah. because I wanted to party it up and <laughs> I was all about living the nightlife, but I was also 21 years old. Right. Exactly. You know, and, uh, and you know, my, uh, I just, I realize now as I'm like, I'm 36 now and going on 37, so close to 40, it's crazy. And, uh, and like my whole existence was this, this idea that I had when I was 20, 21 years old of how I would create my reality around myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm like living that dude's dream and it's not my dream anymore. And it's yeah. like, not what it, it, it was fun for a long time, but it's like, not really, it doesn't really work out after a certain amount of time to just live in excess and hedonism almost. Yeah. Well, what a beautiful thing it is that you've gotten to where you are now. I think so. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. It's, uh, I don't know. I don't know what the future holds, but hopefully it's more trees and water. <laughs> this freaking desert. Hey, I'm thinking about moving up to Mount Charleston. Are you? We we are. Yeah, uh, I would love that. Yeah, Mount Charleston's gorgeous. Yeah, it's gorgeous up there. And it's not bad. It's an hour drive from the city and everything like that. Yeah, that's the thing is you can. It, it's it's beautiful. You're away from the city, but then you're what thirty minutes away. You know, or twenty minutes, however long, yeah. how fast you drive, <laughs> and yeah, exactly. how far into town you want to go. You know. Uh yeah exactly. <laughs> well shit you know you want uh I think that's a great note to wrap this thing up on. We've been talking for quite a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we have. It's fun when it's, you uh, when, when you uh, find things that, to talk about that you're passionate about that you uh, really believe in, and especially when you've been cooped up for so long, and then you're like, <laughs> I have so much to say. Oh yeah, <laughs> I know it. You've been a fantastic guest. You've been you've been holding the conversation for me so well. I love it. Oh, That's my favorite. Awesome. You know? <laughs> I love uh, doing this kind of stuff. Yeah, we're gonna definitely. Yeah. You're gonna have to have you back on again okay, because I right. really enjoyed having you here, and it's been a lot of fun. And you, Same. like you said, you have so much to say so many good stories I to do tell and <laughs> you're good at telling them oh, the, that, I have a lot of stories <laughs> yeah. so uh, before we get out of here we got some promotional stuff I want to talk about right which is uh, you have uh, the new single out which is I'm Alive yes and we have new uh, we have the albums out if you go to uh, leonaxrocks.com there's uh, a couple albums out the, the woman in me right and ready yes. for this and you can get all kinds of good stuff as well at her custom shop she has apparel and uh, even all kinds of uh, it's called bedroom uh, the posters and yeah. stainless steel water bottles all kinds of great stuff there Check her out on Facebook. Check her out on uh, YouTube. And uh, again, of course, LeonaXRocks.com. Yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. So, yeah, thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks for having fantastic. me. And Super fun. Yeah, this has been uh, To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Uh, and check us out. Hit subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> Give us a like. Ring the bell. Follow us on social media. Peace. <laughs> Thanks for watching To The Fullest with Jason Froberg. You can check out more podcasts here and subscribe by clicking right here. We air new podcasts every Monday morning on Space Brain Station and all of your favorite podcast apps.